Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting quick VFX tutorial that will blow you away. Now that sounded a little bit murdery. Anywho, in my last tutorial I showed you how to add cool gun visual effects to your shootout scenes including muzzle flashes and bullet shell casings. Now this works great for single gunshots but for automatic fire you would have a whole lot of bullet shells being emitted from the side of the gun. If you're adding and animating all of them manually, that can be a whole lot of work and be rather tedious. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to add bullet shell casings being emitted from the side of an automatic gun using a particle system instead. Holy! Jeez, I, 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 think I, I think I got you there. Let me just... Ah, it's just a scratch. Get over it. Now, this is going to be an intermediate tutorial and I will assume that you have watched last week's tutorial on how to add visual effects to your shootout scenes and that you're pretty comfortable using Adobe After Effects. But now, before anyone else gets shot, let's jump right into the tutorial. Welcome to Adobe After Effects and this scene should seem familiar. This is exactly where we left off in last week's tutorial and so we have a little shot here of Walter coming into the room and shooting everything up. I have added a few additional muzzle flashes at the end of this composition just to fill in the automatic fire. And if I scrub back a little bit you can see these four shell casings being emitted from Walter's gun. Now these shell casings are manually animated one by one and while that does give you a lot of flexibility, if you do live with a madman like Walter who's going crazy on the gun and you have a scene where there's a lot of automatic fire, you probably don't want to add bullet shell casing manually for every single shot. Therefore in this tutorial I will show you how to set up bullet shell casings being emitted for the automatic fire using a particle system instead. Just a quick note that if I wasn't filming a tutorial I would probably use Trapcode Particular for this. Particular is a very advanced particle system but it is a paid plugin and therefore in this tutorial we're going to use the inbuilt particle system that comes free with Adobe After Effects and that is CC Particle World. Unfortunately CC Particle World is kind of like the neglected child of After Effects. It has a whole lot of potential but Adobe has really not spent much time on it and so it's got a lot of restrictions and limitations that we are going to have to work around. But because it's absolutely free and because neglected children deserve love too, for this tutorial we are going to use CC Particle World. That's enough family drama, let's get started and let's first start by deleting the four shell casings that we've added manually. And let's scrub back a little bit. And let's set up a particle system that emits a whole bunch of bullet shell casings where Walter is holding the gun. For this, let's jump into our layer window and create a new solid. I'm going to call this one bullet shells and hit OK. I'm going to drag the bullet shells below my muzzle flashes and my muzzle flash comp is really just a grouping of all of the muzzle flash elements that I've composited on top. It just kind of keeps my composition a bit neater so you can focus on the bullet shell particles for this tutorial. Now let's come into the project panel and in the gun effects collections you have bullet shells and remember that these are stock footage elements that you can download for free from the Action VFX website. So here I have a bullet shell. Let's drag this into my composition and doesn't matter whether you drop it at the top or the bottom but I'm going to drop it at the very top just so we can check it out. And this is the actual bullet shell layer. Looks pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is this bullet shell texture is going to be the texture for our particles. That means we don't actually need to see this particular layer so I'm going to disable the visibility and return to my bullet shells layer. And now let's apply the CC particle world effect to the bullet shell layer. If you scrub through your composition you will now have a whole bunch of particles being emitted from the center of the screen and this is just the default settings for the CC particle world effect. So let's come into the effects settings and the first thing I want to do is I want to reduce the birth rate because once we've assigned the bullet shell textures to these particles things are going to slow down a little bit and if you have thousands and thousands of these high textured particles being emitted it may grind your computer to a halt. So let's first come up into the settings for the CC particle world effect and bring down the birth rate and Here's limitation number one for the CC particle world effect. You can't bring the birth rate down too much otherwise you will not get any particles at all. It doesn't work particularly well with low number of particles. It works much better if you have a lot of particles. So a number that I found works was 0.05. 
If we scrub through, there's still quite a large number of particles, but once we assign the texture to it, you'll see it'll be a whole lot less and it'll kind of work. We won't have quite as much control as we would have with something like Trapcode Particular, but on the other hand, we also don't have to spend any money. Next, let's change the look of our particles to actually be the bullet shell. And for that, let's come back into the CC Particle World settings, expand the Particle tab, and change the particle type from line over to textured square. They're all going to disappear because we haven't assigned a texture yet. So let's expand the texture tab under particle look. And for the texture layer, let's select our bullet shell casing. If we scrub through, we can't actually see anything and that is because our bullet shells are just a little bit too small. Let's come back into the particle effect and let's change the birth size over to two and jack up the death size to two as well. And now if you scrub through your composition, you should see the actual bullet shells being emitted. Two things I want to fix up. Let's quickly change this over to full resolution. For one, the animation of all of these bullet shells is exactly the same and it's going to look a little bit strange. So in the CC Particle World effect, under Particle, I want to change the texture time over to from start. So all of these bullet shell casings will play back from the start, which Again, isn't perfect, you'd want to have a random loop essentially, which you can't do with CC Particle World, but it'll be good enough. And also you'll notice that some of the shells are really red tinted and that is because by default CC Particle World applies a birth and death color of yellow and red. So let's change both of these over to white, which means there won't be a color tint applied at all. And the bullet shells look like actual bullet shells. But now, if we zoom in even further, you can see that some of these bullet shells are actually a bit transparent. And again, it's because of a default setting in CC Particle World. And that is under the particle settings, you'll have max opacity to 75. Let's jack this up to 100. This will cause our particles to become opaque again, which for our bullet shells makes a whole lot of sense. Let's zoom back out, rewind a little bit and play this back. Cool, that actually starts to look like bullet shell casings being emitted from a gun. Now, a few other minor tweaks. Let's zoom back in and some of the bullet shells are still a little bit transparent and that is because even though our max opacity is 100%, if we expand the opacity map, this is essentially the opacity over the lifespan of these particles, over the lifespan of these bullet shell casings, and they actually start out fully transparent and end fully transparent and kind of fade in and out. So I want to kind of come in here and paint this whole thing solid so that they will always be absolutely opaque throughout their entire life. Also, I'm noticing that my death color isn't actually fully white. So let's make sure I'm setting that to 100% white. And next, all of these shell casings should be exactly the same size. There's no reason, unless you have a magical gun, that the bullet shell casings will be different size. So let's change the size variation to zero. So all of these bullet shell casings will be emitted with exactly the same size. Let's again zoom back out, rewind just a little bit and play this back. I'd say that actually looks pretty neat. Now, obviously, until Walter goes crazy and starts shooting around, there is no reason for any bullet shells whatsoever being emitted from this particle system. So let's go forward until Walter actually starts shooting right about here. And let's, in our CC Particle World effect, animate the birth rate to basically kick in at this point and start emitting the shells. Then I think Walter's taking a short break and shooting in the other direction. So let's animate the particles to be emitted only during the times when Walter is actually shooting. So in your composition, make sure you're on the very first frame where you have a muzzle flash. Let's come up into the CC Particle World effect and enable the stopwatch icon next to the birth rate. Next, lower the birth rate to zero. So on the left side here, not a single particle is going to be emitted and only from this point onwards from when Walter starts shooting will we start emitting particles. So what I'm going to do with the bullet shell layer selected, press U. This will reveal all of the keyframes on this layer and we have one for the birth rate right here for zero. Let's move forward a single frame and let's set this birth rate to 0.05. So this is where the system is going to start emitting particles. There they are coming. Now, you may notice that particle emission for CC Particle World isn't always consistent. Sometimes it kind of bursts and sputters a little bit, and it's just one of those limitations that it has. But for this tutorial, it should do. And I think I'm also going to set the resolution back to auto, so it renders a bit quicker. Let's move forward a little bit until Walter stops shooting right about here. And let's set another keyframe for the birth rate. Move forward a single frame and reduce the birth rate down to zero. So this is where we'll stop emitting new particles. Let's move forward again until Walter starts shooting again right here. 
So on the very first muzzle flash of him shooting in the other direction, let's set another keyframe, move forward a single frame, and let's bring this back up to 0.05. So again, from here, we're going to emit more particles. And this just continues for the rest of my composition. Next, obviously, all of the particles are just being emitted in the center of the screen, which is not where Walter's gun is. So we now just have to animate the position of this producer to follow Walter's gun. For that, let's come to the point where we start emitting particles come up into the CC Particle World settings, expand the producer, and let's set a keyframe for position X, Y, and Z, and reposition this producer, like this little red circle here, right on top of Walter's gun. Let's move forward a little bit, and what I'm going to do now is I'm essentially just going to reposition this producer to follow Walter's gun as he shoots and as he moves around. So I'm just going to drag this over a little bit to kind of keep following the gun. Oops, there's a bit of quick movement here, so make sure you do set a keyframe right before Walter does that quick swing. Again, with the layer selected, just press U and U again to reveal all the keyframes, and you're going to see the keyframes for birth rate as well as position X, Y, and Z for the CC Particle World effect. It's a bit easier to see. Let's reselect the CC Particle World effect, and let's keep repositioning that producer. Technically, right here, it doesn't really matter where that producer is positioned because Walter isn't actually shooting. We just have to make sure that when Walter continues shooting, that producer is back in place at the right spot of the gun. And I'm keeping the producer a little bit on the back end of the gun because that's technically where the position is where the shell would be ejected. Cool, let's scrub back and check this out. And yeah, I'm gonna have to fix up the position of the producer a little bit here and there. So I'm just going to slowly go through and just kind of fix this up and make sure the producer is always kind of at the back of Walter's gun. Yep, I think that doesn't look too bad. Next, let's deal with the fact that the bullet shells are like the shells of a giant gun. They're humongous, they're like as big as Walter's hand. Now, I did kind of leave them this big so it's a bit easier to see on the screen recording, but now that we're getting a little closer to the final effect, we definitely have to shrink them down so they're a bit more proportional to the size of Walter's gun. For that, let's come to the birth size and maybe we'll halve it for now. Maybe we'll set birth size and death size to one. And I would say that's actually not too bad in terms of just the sizing, the relative size of the shells to the gun. So I think that actually looks quite good. Now I'm finding these bullet shells a little bit too dark. So I am going to apply a curves effect to the bullet shells layer. Let's drag that on there. And let's just bring up the brightness a little bit. Obviously not too far, just a little bit. And I think I might also add just a little bit more contrast. Cool, that looks quite good. Next, now that we're so nicely zoomed in, let's add some motion blur to these shell casings because they are being emitted from the gun with quite a bit of force. Now, the standard way to add some motion blur obviously would be to enable the motion blur on the bullet shells layer, and I already have it enabled on the composition. But if you look at the motion blur rendered by these particles, it actually looks a bit subpar, it looks a bit crummy. And again, this is just the way the CC Particle World effect renders out motion blurs for its particles. So we're going to have to do a bit of tweaking and a bit of work around to just make this look a little bit nicer. If you open up the composition settings and go over into the advanced tab, in here you will find some additional advanced option for controlling the look and feel of your motion blur. However, while changing the shutter angle and the shutter phase will have an effect on the motion blur for these particles, increasing the samples per frame or the adaptive sample limit which would increase the quality of the motion blur, doesn't actually do anything on the CC Particle World effect. So let's cancel out of this and let's go another route. Let's disable the motion blur on our composition and on the layer and let's instead use the CC Force motion blur effect. Let's apply the effect to the bullet shells layer and wow, motion blur and it actually looks pretty good. However, you may have noticed that this was a little bit slower and have a navigate around now. You can see it's really making my computer work. CC Force Motion Blur is a brute force calculation of motion blur and therefore while it looks really nice, it's also very, very slow and therefore I am going to temporarily disable this effect again until we're done setting up everything else and then I'm just going to re-enable it at the very end. Let's zoom back out, rewind our composition and play it back. Cool, that actually doesn't look too bad. There are a few things though that I do still want to tweak. For one, I feel some of the shells are being emitted a little bit away from the gun. So let's come into our bullet shell layer at the very top into our CC particle world effect. And under the producer, let's change radius X, Y, and Z to zero, zero, zero respectively. 
to make sure all of the shells are being emitted exactly on the position of that producer. Next, I'm finding that the shells are being emitted a little bit too strongly from the gun, so I'm actually going to expand the physics tab. And let's just bring down the velocity just by a little bit, maybe 0.8. You can also tweak things like the gravity and the air resistance and a few other things in here, but I think I just want to have the shells fly a little bit less far away from the gun. That's not too bad. One thing I don't quite like about this effect is that all of the shells are kind of being sprinkled out in all directions from the top of the gun and this just looks a bit fake because, for example here, when Walter is shooting right at your face, all of the shells would probably be emitted from the side of the gun over towards the right hand side. And right here where Walter is shooting to the right, all of the shells would probably fly towards the back and kind of fall down behind Walter. For that, I do want these particles to be emitted with a little bit more direction. So let's come back to where there's quite a few bullet shells on the screen. And under physics, let's actually change the animation from explosive over to cone axes. So now, all of the particles are being emitted a bit more directional. Right now, unfortunately, the direction is up. So you will see all of the shells being emitted upwards, which looks a little bit more uniform, but still a little bit odd. So let's again come to where we see all of the bullet shells and let's have them being emitted towards the right hand side. In order to specify the direction in which the particles are being emitted, in the CC Particle World effect, under the Physics tab, you will have the Direction Axis tab. Let's expand that. And in here you specify the X, Y, Z axes in which the particles are being emitted. X goes from minus 1 to 1 and that's left to right across the screen. The y-axis goes from minus 1 to 1 and minus 1 is actually up and 1 is down. And the z-axis also extends from minus 1 to 1 where 1 is pointing away from you into the scene and minus 1 is pointing right at your face. So right now x-axis is 0, y-axis is minus 1 so that's upwards and the z-axis is 0 so again nothing so that's why all the particles are being emitted upwards. What I want to do is I essentially want to push the x-axis over to the right, so maybe 0.5, so the particles are being emitted up and out, and you can kind of see it on this little widget up here. So as I twist this, you can see the direction of the particles in 3D space. Maybe I'll also push up the y-axis a little bit, so the particles are kind of not flying straight up, they're kind of coming out at a little bit of an angle. So let's rewind and play this back. Cool, that's much more what I would be expecting where the shells are being emitted out of the side of the gun over to the right hand side. Now, when Walter is facing the other way, this doesn't really work. It kind of looks like the shells are flying forward from the gun, so we need to tweak this a little bit. However, again, another limitation of the CC Particle World effect is that we can't actually animate the direction axis, so I can't change the angle that these particles are flying halfway through. However, what I can do is I can essentially make two layers. One that emits the particles when Walter is facing left and another one that's emitting all of the particles for when Walter is shooting towards the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bullet shell layer and duplicate it. I'm going to rename the bottom one to bullet shells left and I'm going to rename the top one to bullet shells right. Let's disable the visibility for the bullet shells right layer for now and select bullet shells left, press U to reveal all of the keyframes and this layer essentially has two intervals in which it emits particles. This one right here is where Walter is shooting to the left and then there's a break right here and over to the right hand side we're emitting more particles. However, we only want to emit the ones on the left because that's the particles for which this direction is correct so I'm going to delete all of the keyframes for when Walter is shooting right. So all we have here is really just the shells being emitted to the right hand side and then it just stops. So this is really just our left shells. Let's collapse this layer again, hide the bullet shells left and reveal bullet shells right. Press U to reveal all of the keyframes and here we're going to do the exact opposite. Again it has two intervals, one for when Walter is shooting to the left and one where he's shooting to the right. And here I'm going to delete all of the ones where Walter is shooting left. So this layer is really just going to be the shells for when Walter is shooting to the right. And now I can actually change the direction axis on the CC Particle World effect for my right particles to emit a bit further backwards so it looks a little bit more realistic in this scenario. In order to do that make sure you have your bullet shells right layer selected, come back up into CC Particle World, expand the physics tab and the direction axis. And what I am going to do is I am going to lower the X axis a little bit just so that the shells don't fly quite so far off to the right. And then let's increase the Z axis so the particles fly backwards away from the viewer. 
You can kind of see this on this little gimbal up here, but I find this a little bit difficult to read at times. So let's just keep increasing the z-axis to maybe 0.7, maybe 0.8. So the shells are now flying into the scene away from the user and dropping down behind Walter. Let's rewind a little bit and play this back. Cool, that's actually not too bad. Now, it still doesn't look like the shells are actually falling down behind water and that is because they're still being composited on top of water. So now what we have to do is we have to essentially hide any shell that is in front of water or in front of the gun that he's holding. There's quite a few different ways that we can solve this problem, but for this tutorial, let's keep it fairly simple. So let's go to a time when we have shells in front of water and in front of his gun, probably right about here. Let's collapse our bullet shells right layer and let's create a new solid. I'm going to call this layer bullet shells mat. Let's hit OK. And make sure that this layer sits right on top of your bullet shells right layer because we're going to use it as a track mat. Let's disable the visibility because we don't actually need to see it, but make sure the layer remains selected. And now let's zoom in a little bit. Select the pen tool from the toolbar. And let's draw a rough mask around Walter's upper body, including his head and his hands. With the bullet shells matte layer still selected, press M to reveal all of the masks and let's enable keyframing for the mask path property. And let's start stepping backwards through our composition and I'm just going to reshape the mask where needed so it stays nicely on top of Walter's upper body. I know I'm not being perfectly precise here, feel free to spend a whole lot more time on this and do check out my rotoscoping tutorials, especially the ones using Mocha, if you do want to go all out. But because the shells are moving pretty fast and it's a pretty quick shot, I don't think we need to be too terribly precise. And here, where Walter isn't actually shooting, we don't need to worry about the mask. So let's keep going forward to the end of the shot. And again, let's keep adjusting the mask so it stays nicely attached on top of Walter. And let's check this out. Cool, that doesn't actually look too bad. Obviously that only deals with Walter's upper body. We still have to deal with his pants and the gun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock down this mask so we don't accidentally modify it. And let's grab the pen tool and let's draw a rough mask around the top of his gun. Let's expand the mask and enable keyframing for the mask path. And same exercise as before, let's step through the whole thing and make sure the mask follows the gun properly. Right here at the very end, Walter does a pretty quick movement, so do make sure you add enough keyframes to cater for this. Cool, I think that should do for Walter's gun. Let's again lock down this mask and collapse it. And finally, let's deal with Walter's pants. Again, make sure your layer is still selected. Let's pick the pen tool and draw a rough mask around Walter's pants. Expand the mask and enable keyframes for the mask path property. And for one last time, let's go through the exercise of making sure the mask follows Walter's movements correctly. Cool, let's zoom back out and check it out. It's not the greatest rotoscoping job in the world, but it should do. Let's collapse this again, unlock all of our masks and select all of them. Press MM to reveal all of the mask properties and let's increase the feather property to two, just so the mask have a little bit of a soft edge and they're not quite too obvious. If I quickly enable the visibility of the bullet shells matte layer, what we've done, we've created a little black solid outline that follows Walter and his gun and we can use that to hide all of the shells that should be falling behind him. For that, let's collapse the bullet shells matte layer, select our bullet shells right layer and make sure you can see the track matte option. If you can't see it, press F4 to reveal it and let's change this over to alpha inverted. Let's scrub through this. And you can see that now all of the shells seem to be falling behind Walter and his gun. So now let's rewind our composition to the very beginning, re-enable the visibility on the bullet shells left layer and in the bullet shells left layer come all the way down and let's remember to re-enable the CC force motion blur effect and on the bullet shells right layer let's do the same, come into the effects and at the bottom re-enable the CC force motion blur effect and now finally let's play back our automatic fire bullet shell casing effect. And that's all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and as always if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions just leave them down in the section below. 
If you did enjoy this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up, favorite it and share it with the world. And don't forget to subscribe if you do want to see more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later. Jeez, you're, you're bleeding pretty badly. I think this might be one of those dogs behind the barn scenarios, so, you know.